So if you're watching the class right now, um, whether you're on IG or you're on YouTube, uh, please know that I got a live class inside of uh, my community called the Family Banking Cartel. Those are the people that I typically, uh, those are the days that I typically, those are the people I typically talk to. So if you want to be able to ask specific questions, you want to be able to um, uh uh, engage with me a little bit more I pay attention to the people that's in the family banking cartel and it's a cartel that you can literally join for nine dollars and 99 cents but everyone that's in the cartel uh, today cousin Jake is gonna get right into it because I gotta catch up uh, on my sessions how many sessions have I missed how many sessions have I missed uh, do y'all know in the cartel how many sessions I've missed I don't really remember, but it, I think it was like maybe one or two. Uh, I think maybe one. I think I missed one session. I think I missed one session, so I want to make sure uh, that I, somebody said two. I think Sensei, I think you you, you, you you just saying some stuff. I don't know if it was two. I remember teaching that Tuesday, and then I, that Monday, and then I took off that Friday. Yeah, it's only been one. Y'all be acting like I've been gone for... A thousand bajillion years. Okay, I've only missed one. So, uh, y'all trying to get some free lessons out of me. See, y'all see how y'all do that? Y'all said one too many. Okay, I got you. All right, so what's going on, cousin? Bree, hi. So listen, um, today I want to talk about uh, the education business model and what made us million. And, and here's the deal. Um, that's the title of today's topic, but the title of this new series um that I'm, I think I'm going to start bridging into and talking a little bit more about. Um, and I try not to, I try not to really go that way because I know that um, our community is in a stage and in a space where we're extremely um, sensitive. Um, uh, you know, we're extremely woke um, and we got access to a lot of information, but lack a lot of understanding. And I, and I put a post on IG, I think yesterday and it's uh, where, where, um, uh, I put a post um, For those of you that's on IG Just know I'm talking to my class So whatever y'all saying over there Don't even worry about it um, I, I put a post where Jay-Z was like This generation feels like They have more than us Because they have access to information That we didn't um, But what this inf what this industry What this generation They have boldness Because they feel like they have the information But they lack understanding and those that lack understanding lack the actual substance to actually give you that root knowledge that you need. So I'm going to give y'all know I like to kind of talk teaching phases. I like to teach in phases. So there, there's it's a two it's going to be a two tone kind of lesson, you know, uh, uh, weaved into one, which will go into why the education business model made us millions. And when I say us, I'm talking about a collective. Uh, you know, I've never run any business on my own I, you know we i've always had a team and so uh i think it's important for us to uh, notate that um to know that you know in order to be able to do big things you got to have uh, uh some people that can kind of carry big weight with you so i do want to talk about that so um but the reason why i'm telling you this is because y'all can i be honest with y'all for a second just 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 humor me and respond back y'all know I'm, I'm always honest with you um, I want to be honest with you for a second. Um, Ninety percent of my business game came from the Bible. Um, I think my Bible is at. It's at the crib. Or I, or I may have hit it because you know I like to hide my, my secret power Bible. You know, and, and I know this ain't gonna blow over well for a lot of you, but um, yep. All right, so look, so look, um, can y'all tell I'm a reader? <laughs> look, can y'all tell this thing has been with me? through some some tough times right you could they say you could tell 
the usage of somebody in a Bible based on, you know, like how how beat up it is. And this thing uh, is beat up pretty good. And uh, for some time, I've been kind of straying away from a conversation that needs to be had. And I've been straying away because a lot of people been in emotions. And here's the truth. Some of y'all are not going to be ready for this conversation. And it's okay if you want to log off. Because I can only teach you from my truth. No, it's the Bible. I just literally just said the Bible. I didn't say a Quran. And, and I can only teach you from my basis of truth. And um, from my basis of truth, you can kind of depict or dissect what you want to take from it. Um, and the truth is 90% of my business game that I have received um, has been from scripture like it like i don't have a one person mentor where i was like yeah this person showed me this all of my mentors um uh sh taught me how to think about something but no one ever taught me strategies of building anything um i learned that in me trying to decipher information and and, and get some understanding from the bible and and here's the thing i want y'all to understand i there are two types of people who that read the Bible, right? Typically, there are those that are extremely religious based on religious practices. Um, uh, you know, we read it, we're ritualistic, and all oh, hail the King of Kings, Lord Almighty. And you know, we 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 grew up with that whole like quote in scripture thing. Um. And what it did was it created a divide from people who who were really lost and were trying to go to the church to find some type of value. But people in the church just repeating and regurgitating information without having any substance. Um, and so I decided to retract from uh, the religious scope and become more uh, just kingdom minded, like like if if if. The information that anyone is sharing, no matter what religion they're in, if it correlates with what my natural beliefs are, I'm with it. Like, like as long as it correlates and it has some logic to it, because all things that are um, truly spiritual have logic understanding or logic adjectives or additives to it, right? So if I'm, if somebody's telling me something that's absolutely crazy or out of his mind. If it doesn't have any logic to it, it does not make sense. And let me tell you something real quick. Um, things are only considered magical until you figure out how it works. So when you started to dissect science and plants and the universe and the air and the atmosphere, the, the, the more the things that were magical become to be more logical and practical. So that's why, you know, in scripture it says, seek and you shall find. It's saying that because you think that is some wooly, wooly, foo foo stuff. But if you don't actually try to study to get understanding for yourself, not just to pay tithes, not just to pay some building fund, not just to, you know, whatever. But if you actually try to study it for yourself, you'll get understanding that will make you be like, bro, whatever they was teaching in church was bunk as hell and that shit was weak. Because information that they taught, taught us how to be dependent. And there's nothing in scripture that teaches dependency. Only on God. There's literally nothing in scripture that teaches us dependency only on God. Literally nothing. Literally nothing. <laughs> but, but, but religion teaches us dependency on religion. In rituals. And you never realize, you never open up the Bible for yourself or any religious scripture or spiritual scripture to figure out what's the code to life. So as I begin to study the Bible, uh, there are two types of people, right? And again, if this business lesson is not for you and you feel some type of way about it, please exit stage left. <laughs> please. Okay. But I'm, I'm trying to present to y'all... Um, uh, I'm trying to present to y'all my truth on how me and my team made millions of dollars only on biblical principles. And matter of fact, let me just be honest with y'all real quick. The only reason that we got off track with our business 
is when I started to take advice from business people that was not relating to any logic that was here. I'm going to tell you, matter of fact, 100% of my L's I took in business had everything to do with misalignment from who my, my natural business teacher was. I'm just being, I'm just, and it's all making sense now, right? It's all making sense. So, of course, y'all know I'm a teacher, so I like to do what's called a bridge. And a bridge is when you use introduction to bridge you to the actual topic, but it gives you conceptual understanding so that you can understand exactly what the actual lesson's about. Yes, the education business made, uh, made me um, and our team millions of dollars, However, I got to get you to how I got to that understanding. If y'all picking up what I'm putting down, press the number two. Yeah, we live in FBC. We live in the cartel. If you're not in the cartel, you're going to miss it. If, if y'all picking up what I'm putting down, press the number two. All right, so cool. So there are two lenses that people look. The first lens is ritual. Like my mama and my daddy Christians or Muslims or Buddhists or Hindu. So that's what I am. So... So you look at it from a religious lens that is typically one-sided and is typically not sided in your best benefit. It's typically not sided in your best benefit at all. So when you talk about the development of growth, right? When you talk about, you can literally just look at, you can literally just look at, look at a model or a structure or an organization or a church or whatever business and look at the people that are there. That will let you know if the information that's being shared is actually freeing information or the information that's being shared is actually dependency information and people aren't being moved. Okay? So, just want to get the second lens that people look at it is to try to find the lies. They be like, man wrote, they be like, man wrote the Bible. So did man write every other damn book you read. You said, well, well, if it is holy. Uh, why does it have holes in it? Uh, the same reason why you got holes in it in your own damn life, right? I'm not defending scripture. I'm just trying to give y'all understanding, right? So it's kind of like I'm a businessman, right? And I write a business book. In my business book, it has some contradicting uh, uh, statements in it that make you be like, uh, so am I supposed to be with the bank or am I supposed to hate the bank? Because you kind of told me two strategies, and I'm just a little confused. It's a little contradictory, right? And it's only because it's only contradictory because you don't have understanding. When you lack understanding, you miss the point overall. Got it? Okay. So, when I was reading scripture, right, I, I chose not to read scripture to try to disprove it. I chose not to read scripture in a religious sense I chose to read scripture as a businessman because doesn't it doesn't it intrigue you right how can a book a bible or quote unquote a story penetrate thousands of years thousands of years of BS consider how can a Bible that is supposedly not real, how can it train the minds of so many people? And I'm not talking spiritual. I'm talking about the product. So when I'm looking at it as a businessman, I want a product like the Bible. As a, as a businessman. I want a product that's like the Bible. That is so strong. It doesn't matter how many people get disproved or how many people get approved. The product still finna sell. See, we get, see, we get caught up in the, in the, in the minutia of things and you don't like Study to show thyself approved. Seek and you shall find. Shit, I wanted to learn the lessons. How could, how could this, uh, how could this scripture or this Bible, right? How 
could it take some poor Jesus figure that exists or does not exist? <laughs> Depending on who you ask. Sold a concept to people who were there or were not there. <laughs> That people all over the world debate about, fight over, love over, build relationships with, and sell the product of whatever this mystery person was selling, or was he real? I'm not in the, I'm not, I'm not finna go with y'all there. I'm not going with y'all there. We ain't, th today ain't Bible class. I'm talking about a business lesson using the Bible as a primary business we're going to use as a case study. Everybody want to determine what's the truth and what's not the truth. I'm like, shit, truth or not, this product in my hand, somebody made this thousands of years ago. Over five, uh, a detailer said over five billion copies were sold. Five billion. <laughs> Five billion copies were sold. And not only that, they created this product and made many different products of the same product using different translations. So not only do you have the main translations, you have many different translations of the same Bible in different languages in the translations. So you took one product and created a thousand different offers off the same one product. I said, ooh. I said, boy, whoever, whoever engineered this, it got to be God. Who, whoever engineered, who, who, so what they say, whosoever engineered this, got to be, got to be God. <laughs> we don't even, hey, we don't even know who, who get the money off the Bible. Who making the bread? <laughs> like who's benefiting from the sales of the scripture that is still unknown so i said damn how can i create a product not be seen nobody knows who i am and everybody in the world is buying it arguing over it fighting over it, educating about it loving it and I can literally walk past somebody, be worth billions of dollars, and nobody will ever know who own it. I say, oh, that's private living right there. Now, that's gangster. Let's not get into the schematics of things. Let's look at it for what it is. Damn. That's a cold business plan. That's a cold, that's a cold business plan. And matter of fact, uh, Shay said the company that prints it makes the money. So they making money, millions of dollars off of somebody else's literature? Oh my God. Boy, boy, so you telling me they middleman billions of dollars? Y'all kidding me? Y'all not trying to learn the business of the Bible? Oh, that's crazy to me. This is crazy. People didn't created churches. They didn't created businesses off of this. Bro, bro, you know how many churches have raised or made millions of billions of dollars off of just repeating this shit? Not, I'm not saying that it's shit, but I'm just saying, y'all get what I'm saying. Somebody opened the Bible and was like, yo, I'm finna create me. An, listen, I'm about to create me an education company and we gonna call it a nonprofit. We gonna wrap it up and call it church. And I'm finna get paid to educate people and take donations. Whether, whether, listen, 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 listen. Whether you want to believe it or not, whether you want to believe it or not, you got to respect the business. And when I started reading scripture to get business understanding, um, the first person I want to give, I want to give credit. I said that there was not a single person that was responsible for this other than the the biz, the Bible, I lied. His name was Dr. Miles Monroe. He has passed. He died in 2015 in an airplane accident. Dr. Miles Monroe is the number one, is the number one pusher of understanding just what it is, okay? So, um, I don't know much about Myron Golden, 
But if he's teaching anything like kingdom principles or anything like that, the, the true the true originator of that is Dr. Miles Moreau. He's passed now, right? So, uh, so now, what does this got to do with my business? I, see, I, I don't know Myron, but I've seen a couple of his videos, and he on point. Okay. Um, so when it comes to this book, right? When it, when it comes to this book right here, right? I say, what's the business? We scared to sell a product that is physical. Bro, Jesus was selling digital products before there were digital products. looking at the the play people be like man or man i love jesus or man his name was joshua his name was Yeshua. his name well I, I don't whatever the name is oh oh forget the name i'm trying to see how that man sold a product that no one could see and people thousands of years later is selling that product in 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 this is the manual of the listen they created the scripture a physical product after the digital sale that's called a pre-sale hey listen he wasn't even selling this they had scrolls so he was pre-selling the product before there was a product oh my god <laughs> Bro, and we scared to go out there and do business? <laughs> so when I saw that, y'all, I was I was broke, busted, and disgusted. Feeling bad for myself. And I started reading the scripture and I learned I learned how to navigate the Bible by trying to find the business lessons in scripture. People trying to figure out where he from. I don't care where he from. Listen, how many of y'all, er, er, how many of y'all, listen, we're going to look at a couple things. Y'all, I'm making my, can y'all see where I'm going? Somebody said, did you start from page one? No, I started from what I needed as a businessman, okay? I found the lesson that was needed. Isaiah 28 10 says line by line a little here a little there you don't read the Bible from front to back you read the Bible based on the need that you have this is a live mentor the Bible is a live mentor you don't read it front to back like okay it won't make sense because the scripture just because you see it Genesis to uh, uh, to Re Revelation that doesn't mean that the books were actually written in though in that same time frame so you, you don't read Genesis to Revelation. That's why a lot of y'all be confused. You read it based on your need. It's like having a mentor in your in your pocket. That's why a lot of y'all be feeling like what well, Genesis said, but then Isaiah said, bro, you don't even know when the book was written. When like, I ain't getting into that. I'm just getting into the lessons that I was able to receive from Scripture. That's all. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just telling you what's there in scripture. So I said, dang. So when, so when Jesus came in, he said, man, first of all, first of all, <laughs> first of all, Oh, uh, okay. Oh, uh, I can't just be going in there just telling them something new. All right, so I got to be well learned. See, here's the thing. I learned this from Jesus. Y'all, I ain't talking about 
All the other stuff. I'm talking about business lessons I learned from Jesus. Because y'all Christians, I just want to be Christ-like. Two different things. People that want to be Christ-like, you can see it in their life. They got a business. They operate. And they independent. They believe as, in themselves as a version of God. They, see, see, those are people that are Christ-like. Christians, see, the, 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 those the sheep of uh, us, uh, uh, the sheep uh, fl flock stuff that we be hearing. Ain't nobody gonna call me no goddamn sheep. I ain't no sheep of nobody flock. God damn it. I I I am of the same makeup. That Jesus was, and so are you, if you become Christ-like. Uh, Cause sheep are the dumbest animals on the planet. So when you allow your pastor, your minister, to call you a sheep, that ain't no goddamn compliment. That means you dumb, you incompetent, and you can't take care of yourself. That's what that means. You're dead. So when you get rosen from the dead, that simply means that you come from your slumber. What is your slumber? You walking around here with, without without knowing wh whether you're coming or you're going. You're doing the same shit every day that you know don't work and you ain't making no changes. You are walking dead. Okay? Coming to the light, just a metaphor for knowledge. Jesus is the light. He is knowledge. He's the way. Right? That just means information. My boy Julian Gordon breaks down in his metaphysical class that y'all need to be a part of on Sundays. Julian Gordon. That's another, that's a plug for my brother. I ain't got nothing to do with that. So. So when we talk about this scripture thing, right? This is what you got to understand. I read it from business principles. So we got to get some understanding here. All right. So Jesus knew he was selling a digital product, a product that could not be seen. You scared to sell a product that is physically right there. The product is physically in front. It's fit. You got the product in hand. You got your course that people can see. This brother was selling something that was unseen. It's still being sold to today. I said, man, you got to have some type of balls to do that. So what gave him the confidence to sell some stuff like that? Whether you believe it to be true or not, the principles are real. Here's why. Don't y'all be reading these business books. You don't know if they telling you the truth or not, but you believe it. Don't you? Y'all be like, man wrote the Bible. What she is? Uh... A man wrote this too. Valuation. Corporate valuation. Didn't a man write this? What's his name? A uh, McKinsey and Company. A group of men wrote this. You don't know if they actually did what they said for you to do in here. But when you read it, you accept it. You take the truth from it. You go apply it and you see the change. I'm just teaching y'all principles. That's all. I'm just... I'm just can I can I just teach y'all principles? That's all I want to do. I just want to break it down, and I just want to teach y'all basic principles that you can pull from so you can stop being so uptight about reading something. You got to get information from something that's been around a thousand years. So, let's just look at Jesus. The brother sold a product that was digital, unseen. So, in order for him to be able to truly navigate that, he knew one or two things. He had to get educated. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. First step. The first step that he knew he had to do was get educated. And here are the four layers of understanding. So from 12 or 13, he did that little magical thing, and then people would be like, well, Jesus disappeared until he was 30. Ain't nobody asked what the hell he was doing from 12 to 30. <laughs> See, I wanted to know, what was that man doing from 12 years old to 30? We just going to act like that's, that just don't exist. We just going to act like him disappeared and came back saving lives. 
which he actually never saved lives if you read scripture. People saved themselves, but their belief that he had the information is what saved them. And all he did was revert them back to that you did that. You and God. I didn't do that. But we don't want to we don't want to see what he they said when you say what you said in red letters is real, but we don't want to believe the truth when we see it. So I just wanted to know, okay, what in the hell was Jesus doing from 12, 13 to 30? We just gonna just let them years just dis a goddamn peer and act like it didn't exist. That's what we're gonna do. Now watch this. Do you know the reason why they don't want to tell you that Joseph had sex with Mary? I know this is hard for y'all to digest right now. But the reason why they don't want you to know that Joseph actually had sex with Mary is because when you realize how close you are to becoming Christ-like and becoming your own version of God will be the moment that your life changed. So in order to be able to separate, what did they have to do? They had to make him be like something that was never created again. So that you would never be able to become Christ-like. You're always aspiring, but you can never become. Those are two different things. Two different things. So when you start realizing, wait, I can actually become Christ-like? Like, I can do exactly what the man did? Yes. Yes. You can also walk on water, which was a metaphor for troubling times. Y'all get, y'all miss it. Jesus always talking in parables. The examples were always parabolic. I think I made the word up or maybe real. I don't know. <clears throat> I'll get into the, the schematics on maybe a Sunday. Well, I can't do it on the same day as my brother Julian Gordon. Maybe him, he and I can go in there and ha, 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 we can get in there and get it together. All right, so look. I ain't, I ain't getting in there to break it down. I need y'all to follow me real quick. Follow me real quick, okay? So what so what Jesus did for those of you that you know believe in fairy tales he did what every other wise person would do when you have the ability you have the calling but lack the understanding oh my god what do you what do you do when you're done all you can and it feels like it's never enough. You know what he did? He went to study. That's what he did. He went to study. Because he, he said, okay, I got the natural. I can pull people in. But at 12, 13, he got stuck in that little, that little synagogue when he was uh, preaching and ministering and teaching. What he realized was that he lacked depth. He lacked understanding. That go right. That go right in line with uh what Jay Z was saying. He lacked understanding. What you mean he lacked understanding? This is exactly what I mean. He lacked understanding because have y'all ever seen a twelve or thirteen year old um try to preach a sermon? It sound good, but the weight ain't there. Like a lot of y'all trying to run y'all business, it sound good, but the weight ain't there. That's why you get scared when you get challenged. Your weight ain't there. That's why when you learn information, you try to steal information or you try to uh, take a course. Don't give acknowledgement. Don't get with the mentor. You take the course and run off. Try to go make a buck and you wonder why you stuck because the weight ain't there. So what Jesus went to go do is what every natural human being would do is go get some weight to you. Because whether y'all believe it or understand it or not, around the age of 12, 13, 14, around that time, you were entering manhood. Girls were getting married off at 12, 13, 14. So at 12, 13, y'all think of him as these 12, 13 year olds that's in America. That parents ain't been teaching them how to be grown. 12, 13 year old back then, your ass was damn near grown. So from grown 12 to grown 30, the brother got educated. He learned. <clears throat> I ain't gonna tell you the book, yeah, I am. Go to the go find the lost books. You may find your lost understanding. 
Because what Jesus understood was, <clears throat> in order for me to sell my product, in order for me to sell my product that cannot be seen, <laughs> to get information to people that don't have understanding, I must be well vetted and well educated in order to be able to get through some of the fluff I'm going to deal with. How do you think Jesus knew who to walk and who to go see and who to go to recruit? The brother was scouting for years. You think that was by osmosis? He just all, all, you know, all seeing and all knowing means all studied, right? All, all studied. I'm just trying to give you all some understanding. So I said, okay, so the reason why when he came out, he launched to greatness was because, oh shit, because he was confident in what he was saying so much because he studied the information. So I said, Jake, the reason why you lack confidence is because you're not competent enough. Y'all remember the formula in the, in the cartel? Y'all remember the formula I taught y'all? Confidence plus competence equals compensation. He knew that people wouldn't believe him if he didn't have no weight to him. So he had to go get weight. And the reason why a lot of our businesses are failing is because you have no weight to you. You took information from a free webinar. You didn't invest. Then you tried to create a product from it and you don't have weight and you're wondering why you're failing. No weight. No way. You think that just these IG lives are enough. Man, I get enough game, free game on IG live. Ain't no weight on no IG live. Ain't no weight. You getting free information. What do you, if the information is free, what you think information is if you actually studied under somebody? I wanted to get some weight. So that's what he did. He went and studied. And he practiced and he studied and he practiced. Why do you think inside of his little community, when he went to go actually get off, everybody in his city already knew who he was and what weight he was working with? They knew what type of time it was when he decided to go ahead and get in his bag. That's why his brothers, oh, y'all didn't know he had brothers, right? He had older brothers. So well, let's explain that if Jesus didn't, if Mary didn't have no more children. Where the brothers come from if they older? Okay. It's another day. So, the brother, right? The brother said, hey, yo, like, let's go to Judea, you feel me? Let's go to this festival, you feel me? And let's just, let's go see, you know, what not. Jesus said, hey, bro, take your time, man. Listen, I'm not ready to go out there and be no public figure. I ain't trying to do that. Because what I say got weight to it, and I don't know if y'all ready for the weight, and I don't know if I'm ready for the weight. So I'm going to stay in this area right here until I feel the inkling to move forward. A lot of y'all are waiting for discernment when discernment is just learning how to study and read people and stay to your principles. If things are off your principles, your discernment will ring off. The reason why you lack business sense, common sense, business discernment is because it's not practice. This ain't no really foo foo spooky shit. The reason why you're easily played is because you don't easily practice. You can't play somebody that practiced it. You can't play somebody that practice. But you can play somebody that's never had exposure, never had practice in the exposure. It's easy to play that somebody. I got played last summer. Well, you know why I got played? Because I was in an area I had no business being. And I was unpracticed in that environment. Boom, got exposed. Cool, I understand now. Now I see. Because losses just mean loss of vision. That's it. See, when y'all be like, man, I took an L, I took a loss. No, you didn't take a loss. You, did, you had lack of vision. You lost vision. You would never, oh, you didn't even know what to look at. 
That's all that means. Once I lost vision, if I choose to have a lost vision, all those L's are on me. But if I get popped on the head, I'm going to learn. That's what Jesus was learning in little Bethlehem. Y'all thought that he was 12 to 30 just sitting in some monk place? How do you know? How, how was he able to be able to come out on the scene and know exactly what to do and how to execute? The brother was practiced. So you know what that told me? Jake, you got to educate yourself and you got to practice. You can't just get information and not practice. You got to get information and practice. You got to get this in, in practice. You got to get in your bag and practice. I, listen, I stopped going to church a long time ago. Why? Because I'm like, y'all getting information, but y'all ain't practicing. Scripture says the poor man's words are not heard. They're despised, which means it doesn't mean a poor man doesn't have good words. It means that he lacks execution. So therefore, I ain't got nothing to hear. I ain't got nothing to say with you. So a lot of y'all ain't, y'all ain't mad at God. You mad at the church for being unpracticed. That's just the truth. Get back in line. Understand how it functions, how it works, and watch how everything executes. And typically the people that go get the life that they absolutely dreamed about, they actually walk out scripture without even realizing it. They understand that ain't no God coming to save them. You got to go execute, got to go do it on your own, and you got to do it in mission for a bigger cause. I said, oh, I got that. So, okay, he studied and got practice. Okay, cool. So when he studied and got practice and his brothers tried to trick him out his spot and put him on a platform he wasn't ready for, he said, no, I'm good right now. See, that's the part that y'all missed in scripture that your pastor didn't teach you about. He had his brothers that tried to tell him to go to a festival so that he can show his stuff. And because he was practiced, he said, no, nah, big dog, th that's for y'all. Y'all go and have fun. I'm going to stay in the area that I know that I still got some practicing to do. Because when I hit the scene, just know I ain't coming to play. And a lot of y'all are trying to be seen before you practice. You better take lessons from the man. You better take lessons from the man. You, you want your product to be seen, but you ain't got no practice. You ain't got no practice. How can you expect to move a nation if you ain't practicing your little city? I'm just trying to tell you the truth. I'm studying what's in front. The same scripture y'all got is I got a different, I got different lessons. If you don't, if you don't go to church no more, God, well, welcome, welcome to Church of Freedom. This is the COF, Church of Freedom. Because we finna be teaching you how to be free. You understand? <clears throat> so, so the reason why. The reason why, the reason why he was able to maneuver the way that he was was because brother had practice. Brother had practice. So, <clears throat> y'all ain't never wondered how he was able to walk up to millionaires Y'all, let me tell y'all something. <clears throat> Can I tell y'all something? Y'all ain't never asked yourself, how was Jesus able to walk up to successful businessmen and convince them to walk with him if he had no proof of concept? Y'all ain't never asked yourself that? Why would a businessman, business brothers, fishermen, Tax providers, y'all, y'all, y'all don't understand that business partners were entrepreneurs. They weren't no sheep. These were leaders that had distribution channels. <clears throat> so he said, "Wait a minute, y'all thought that was about osmosis? No, it's because of the work he did, and when he spoke, it came with a little weight to it." So that made him say, oh, oh, I heard about you. What's up? What you got going? Jesus spent, listen, I'm, I'm going to give you a bigger vision. I'm going to take you from being a fish of men, a fish of fish to a fish of men. This is how big your neck can go. They said, he said, oh, oh, yeah. He said, he said, he said, oh, 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 yeah. That's how you can do that? Bet. <clears throat> 
Well, how could he do that if he wasn't practiced? Why would a businessman say yes to somebody who is unpracticed? Y'all know you right now. There is no businessman that will leave their business career to come and follow you without having some proof of practice. <clears throat> Y'all say, man, from 30 to 33, his life, yeah, you only, did you know you only need three years? You need three years of full concentration and a full lunch to completely take your life to the next level. Your brand only needs three good years of a full lunch. And that's exactly what Jesus, Jesus ran a big business. Three years. Boom. Everybody talking about him for the rest of their life. Y'all ain't ever wondered that? Let's, let's get past the died for my sin. Let's get to heaven on earth first. How can I tap into the things that Jesus walked so I can be able to do the same thing for myself? <clears throat> so we said, I right, bet. <clears throat> cool. Okay. So I said, okay. Education. He got himself educated. He studied the field. And he knew, damn, I can't get a bunch of people that's like me because I need to be able to sell my product to multiple different distribution. He says, so I can't get a bunch of shit talking fishermen because I can't get the, the, the Romans who are a certain way. I can't get them who are like this. So I got to be able to use different people's influence. See, Jesus, Jesus had micro influences before micro influencing. He was micro influencing before micro influencing. Jesus didn't have to learn the media of the day. He just had to connect to the people that knew the people. He was micro-influencing. <laughs> so when I came on the scene for business, I said, damn. Okay, 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 okay. I don't know this area or this people or this platform. Who can I meet that knows this platform that I can partner with that can help explode this thing? Okay, who can I meet that can bring me to a different demographic that probably would never listen to me because they, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the preaching, teaching, business, cussing Bible man. And, and who can introduce me to an audience that wouldn't necessarily listen to me unless I was... Uh, 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 deemed worthy. Okay, boom. And I just do JV deals. Why? Because that's what Jesus did. He did JV deals. Why you think Jesus didn't, didn't his, Jesus didn't build a team of broke people. He built a team with people that had resources, cash flow, income, money, entrepreneurs, know-how, capable, intelligent. They had specialties to them. How could he build up a team like that? Because that brother was practiced. <laughs> the brother was a bad business. <laughs> ah. He was about his paper. <laughs> so, I say, I say, oh, I said, okay. So, I'm, I'm, I'm okay, so. So now I'm looking like, okay, so how is he selling people on a concept that nobody understood? And how could he get people to see that, want to change their ways, and then want to buy into the product that he had? I said, okay. I, I said, okay. So, if you study Jesus' model, you can see it being echoed all around the world today. It's the education model. 
So if you have a product or a service and you have not solicited to the education model, you losing. Because Jesus knew he couldn't come into an already existent world and just tell him that his product better. What was his product? Salvation and changing of ways so that you can understand the new way of actually operating. That was his notion or that was his claim to fame. Man made him their God. He never made himself their God. He was like, bro, chill with that. If you actually read the text, he said that quite often. Hey, bro, chill. Like, no, nah, him. Like, like, y'all need to understand. Like, no, I'm no him, big boy, big dog. Him. That's why a lot of y'all being confused when he was on the cross and he was like, the pastor was like, he was questioning himself. But himself said, keep going. But himself said, him scared because he was a human. No, stop, bro. That was a human being that operated and tapped into his godhood and was scared as hell on that cross. That's what it was about, okay? He was so good at what he did, he told them. They said, who sent you? That's right, zillionaire. He said, my, 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 my CEO sent me. They like, nah, bro, you too good. You got to be the boss. Just because you don't see my CEO don't mean I'm the boss. I'm just good at what I do. He like, no, nah, no, nah, bro, you got to be God. <laughs> That's what men like to do. That's what men like to do. We like to idolize things when because we, we don't want to put in the work to become it. Y'all go read your scripture. Get educated. There's not one person that he healed. They healed themselves. Go look at it. All the miracles. Name me one person that he healed. But because you lack understanding, you think it's magical. And you idolize it versus understanding you can become that. He said, oh... So, 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 Jesus said, okay, hold up. Okay, I just can't come in there with a, mm, I just can't be like, all right, boom, here's a new way. Hey, what's going on? My name is da-da-da. He had to have years of practice because y'all, do y'all not notice when the light finally hit Jesus? That He shined. Brother shined. Bro, he was so cold with it. He was flipping over tables like, who gonna check me? I'm big dog. <laughs> check your facts. Nobody greater. <laughs> he sound like Muhammad Ali. I'm so fast, I turn off the switch. I'm in the bed before the lights off. Oh, I'm so bad. I'm so bad, I make, I make, a, I make a hurricane be quiet. I'm so bad, I make a tiger my cat. I'm bad. I'm bad. I'm bad. <laughs> so I'm studying Jesus. I'm like, okay. So now I'm reading the story of Jesus, not in infatuation, but in duplication. Oh, Iggy, why am I doing them like this, Iggy? Why am I? Pauline, Pauline, Pauline. See, 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 I begin to start, y'all, I'm not being silly. I'm serious. This is the thing. I get excited when I talk about this. See, y'all study Jesus for infatuation. That's why you never can duplicate his results. I study Jesus. I study Jesus for duplication. Because if Jesus felt like he was the one and only God, why would he tell you, take what I'm teaching you and go be greater? That brother was so cold. He said, my blueprint is so cold, you're going to be better than me. I said, ooh, let me study the blueprint, big dog. What's the blueprint, big fella? What's the blueprint, big fella? So when your mentor not teaching you how to be better than him, that ain't the blueprint, big fella. Get up out of there, big fella. <laughs> if your mentor ain't got no blueprint for you to follow so you can execute it better than them, get out of there, big fella. That ain't in the scripture. 
<laughs> so, how did Jesus? <clears throat> so, how did Jesus do it? How did he do it? He didn't sell them. He did not trick them. He educated. Here's my product. And here's how it works. Oof. God, man. Man, God is good, y'all. Y'all don't even understand. I thank God for this revelation, man. When I got this revelation, I couldn't be in church the same. I can't sit in church when I know that they teach the scripture wrong. I can't sit in church when I know they're teaching it wrong. I say, I say, so I'm studying it, right? I'm like, damn. He taught them. And by nature as man, what did we do when he taught them? Every, he come with a bunch of accolades and credibility. He taught people and they still were what? Unbelievers. Not killed them yet. They were unbelievers. No matter the credibility. No matter how they, they, they were still unbelievers. He didn't get prideful. He may have talked a little shit under his breath that didn't make that didn't meet scripture. <laughs> Listen, you got to be a little crazy uh, If you can go get some a whole bunch of criminals And people that talk shit and cuss Like, you got to have some crazy to you So y'all thought Jesus was sweet you, 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 You're losing it Zambia, what's up? We got people tuning in from Zambia So, so what did Jesus do? Jesus said, okay, boom I got you I'm going to educate you and I'm going to teach you. And when that's not enough, I'm going to show you how it's done. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <clears throat> oh, yeah. IG, IG trying to play with me. IG just be... IG been ending my lives lately, y'all. IG been really... IG been really messing with your boy. I'm back. <clears throat> so... So, what happened? He say, okay, I got you. Now, they ain't had enough because we, we talking about principles of the Bible, Sister so Victoria. We're going to let him make it a little longer. <clears throat> so, guess what he did? He said, okay, I'm not in the selling business. I'm in the educating. Because an educated, an educated buyer makes educated decisions 100% of the time. Because an educated buyer makes educated decisions 100% of the time. So Jesus said, I'm going to teach you, but I'm going to show you too. And after that, if you don't accept, that ain't on me. That's on you. And I'm not going to stay and try to figure that out. You know, a lot of times why our businesses be failing is because you just want to sell, but you don't want to educate and teach. I'm just telling y'all. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just telling y'all. I'm just telling y'all the truth. So he said, "Okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna educate you." And watch this. If there was ever an environment where he felt like wouldn't accept any of his teachings or his examples, he just didn't go there. Notice there were zero miracles performed in Bethlehem, where he was from. He wasn't finna go where he ain't finna be appreciated. And a lot of y'all keep trying to sell your products to people that don't appreciate you. Move the hell on. I'm just teaching y'all all along. So Jesus started an education business. And his product was freedom. So what model... What model... Did Jesus teach his disciples? 
He said, don't go in there just trying to, you can't sway people that don't want to be swayed. You can't talk to people that don't want to be talked to. And so what he saw, he said, you want to talk to the people that are pushed out, ostracized, uh, um, uh, uh, they, they, they don't, they don't believe in nothing because those are the ones that's going to be up to hearing and being educated. Cause those are the ones that had enough. See, let me tell you something. You cannot, um, convince somebody who's not been convicted. Now, what you mean? You cannot convince somebody that doesn't deal with conviction. Now, Jake, what you talking about? When I say conviction, right, what I am talking about is that inkling inside of you that say, damn, I want to change. And typically people that are pushed out aside, they want to change because they want they want to they want to be able to have the stuff that they don't have. So that's why I did it like, yo, my product is for the people that don't have it already. I, I ain't going after the people. I ain't going after the people that feel like. Uh, they already got it. I'm not finna try to sell my product to people that feel like they already know it. So if I were to walk up to somebody selling insurance, oh, I already know this. You know what? You know what, sir? Don't even worry about it. Y'all trying to convince people that feel like they already know it. Move the hell on. You can't convince if they not already convicted. Change comes after conviction. I got to have something inside of me. That's why in scripture says you will reap a harvest that you did not sow. What was that telling us? When your easy sales are those that are already wanting to change. They already want your product. They already were looking for you. Those harder ones are those where you got to educate and you got to show them. You got to educate and you got to show them. You got to educate and you got to show them. And eventually they come. So when you run your business, you got to do the same thing. You got to educate. And you got to show them. You got to educate. Then you got to show them. You don't get discouraged with the education in the show. Because if your product really is what you say that it is, when they get on it, they never going to get off. See, that's, that's, that's that blue magic. How long is that customer going to be on this product? That's why he taught it. He said, listen, I know I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And if you ain't got that same feeling about your product, you in the wrong business. Jesus said, bro, I know I'm the truth. So whether you get me now or you get me later, just know I'm a beer, baby. And if I'm not here, I'm going to teach people how to keep my product moving when I'm gone. That's called Big Boss. So you know what Jesus did? He created digital education centers. Jesus created digital education centers. Jake, what you mean? He taught people how to teach. And he taught them how to perform miracles. Go read the scripture. He taught them how to do what he does. He taught, he taught them the game and told them, now you go do it. I can't do it by myself. Now you go execute. You go do it. He trained them. He taught them. He groomed them. And he educated them. I said, wait a minute. So he educated himself. Then he educated his customer. Then he educated his team that's going to go educate and do the same thing. I said, oh, shit. I've been running my business wrong. My business should be ran more as an education company than a product pushing company. Because if I can educate my customer on why I'm the best, if I can educate my customer on why they way not working, if I can educate my customer to make them want to feel like they missing out, if I can educate my customer and tell them what makes me different, why we different, and I can provide you support, ooh wee, watch out now. Watch out. He created an education company. 
I say, damn, okay, okay, okay. So how did he keep them excited? He built a community for them all to have likeness. That's the same thing that iPhone did. Everybody had the green text bubble until iPhone came with the blue. So you knew that there was a difference. It was blue gang or green gang. Either way, you couldn't be. There's a thousand different Androids, and the only conversation is, is your bubble green or is it blue? So he created a cult-like community that made people say, like, I only associate with people, you know what I mean, that's on the same plan. It's on the same plan. That's why iPhone users, but I only associate with people that got iPhones. You may be joking with them, but you really ain't going to text them. <laughs> you Like, bro, that green bubble just really do something to you. Like, bro, this bubble really fucking with me. It's the bubble. <laughs> so I said, damn. So not only do I need to educate myself, okay, Jesus not going to teach. Jesus never taught on something that he wasn't a master at. I'm going to tell y'all the four levels of master in a second. So he only taught what he knew. That, that'd be a lot of y'all issues. Y'all be trying to teach and create products that you know nothing about. See, 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 how many of y'all remember the story of the rich man walking up to Jesus saying, I want to rock with you. And Jesus like, sell everything and then you can come with me. How many of y'all remember that story? A lot of y'all pastors got it wrong. Because Jesus was about kingdom business. He was business minded. And being business minded. And being business minded. You got to think from a business perspective. What was he saying? Jesus was like, hey, I'm hot right now. So if you're not willing to throw all your shit that you got going, throw all your baggage away, throw all your pride away, throw all your whatever away and come learn directly from me, I ain't rocking with you. That was the point that he was making. That's the point that he was making. A lot of pastors get, they start hooping and hollering right there. And you got to make a decision. <laughs> you, you need to understand. Yeah, I, no, that ain't got, that ain't no hooping and no hollering right now. All that was right there was simply him telling somebody, if you want to say that you my disciple or that you selling my product or you moving my way or that you're my mentee, you got to come get learned, big dog. Your money does not supersede you actually learning the information that's required in order for you to actually succeed. You got to get some understanding. That's what that meant. So the reason why people don't stay on your product is because they lack understanding. See, when you get understanding, it's like an anchor. It's a weight. Boom. You ain't going nowhere. You ain't going, it's an anchor, it's a weight, boom, you ain't going nowhere. The reason why people go from your product to another product is because you never spent time giving them understanding. So they gonna think that other product may be better because they taking a time to explain why it's better and they're walking them through the process. Boom, there's some weight right there. There's some weight. You just sold them. Somebody educated them. Y'all are not the same. Boom. There's some weight. What's up, Ray? So, but when you give them some understanding, you give them substance, it's harder to get somebody off their track when they don't have understanding. So a lot of people that be like, I don't rock with Jesus and all the other stuff. I'm like, bro, you lack understanding. I don't even argue with them. Remember what I told you, unless convicted, you can't convince. So ain't no reason for me to even talk about it. <laughs> you can't, I can't talk about it. <laughs> There's no point. Self-righteous. You got it. You got it. You got to figure it out. Jesus, Jesus was over here running big business and y'all over here caught in religion. And you missing the biggest master builder of all time whose product is still selling. Master Musa product ain't still moving. King Solomon product is still not moving. <clears throat> All those big billionaires that were billionaires before, they products are still not moving. I know one product that's still moving to this day. So if you don't want to learn business tips from that, you're crazy. So he said, okay, boom, education company. I said, oh, 
I said, okay. So he had an education company, and he disguised his product in the in, in the education. I said, oh shit, that's what I'm missing. Because when I got started in the insurance industry, y'all, I'm selling, I'm selling, I'm selling, I'm selling, I'm selling, and I'm not getting, I'm going up and down, I'm getting frustrated because I'm trying to sell, I'm trying to sell you on why you need to get my product, and I'm learning all these persuasion classes, I'm taking hypnosis classes, I'm trying to learn how to convince somebody how to purchase something from me, when Jesus was like, yo, the plan is right here, educate, brother, take your time and educate. Because when you sell, you're going to have to sell them and work backwards and educate to try to keep them. But if you educate up front, you ain't going to have to educate them again. I said, ooh. I said, that makes sense there. I said, that makes sense. My mentor said, uh, my mentor's name is Tony Stevens. He said, Jake, slow down. Slow down. He said, slow down. I said, well, I'm slowing down for a man. Listen, I'm trying to get to the money. I'm trying to get to the bag. I'm trying to get to the honey. He said, slow down. Slow down. I said, okay. Uh, uh, what, 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 what you want me to slow down on? Like what? He said, listen. Listen to me and understand me clearly. He said, facts tell. Stories sell. He said, facts. Tell. Stories. Sell. So if you don't know how to educate people in a story, if you don't know how to teach them in a way that they can understand it, you're never going to get to the level that you want to get to. Now, I want you to park here parenthetically, okay? How many of you all, that's why I went, a lot of people read the Bible, y'all be y'all be reading like some of the stuff, a lot of the stuff that y'all read and be like, see, that's a story. Yeah, of course, it's, it's a, it was a parable. What is, it's a parable. <laughs> you you reading that fact Because you lack understanding So you don't know what in here is actual biblical or Historical You don't know what is actually a story Trying to get you to dig deeper My boy uh, Julian Gordon actually talks about The metaphysical understanding of scripture On Sundays You can follow him Julian Gordon Alright so I'm talking about the business side He do the metaphysical mindset stuff So Let's break this down on a biblical level, right? Stories sell, facts tell. So why was Jesus able to encapsulate billions of people over a thousand years? He had the best stories. He was able to use examples like farming which was the business of the day. Um, uh, use examples of all this other stuff that was able for people to be able to picture themselves with his product. And that's where a lot of us miss out on business. People cannot picture themselves with they Can I tell you something? People see themselves with it before they buy it. So if they cannot see themselves with your product, they will never buy your product. If they cannot see themselves with your product, they will never buy your product. That's why in them commercials, y'all be like, they just using black people and black faces to get people to buy. Yeah, and it works. Y'all be like, see, that's, that's cultural appropriation. Yeah. Jesus did that too. You forgot? He had 12 disciples. Technically, there were many more. They just didn't count women back in the day as a disciple. Jesus had 12 uh, uh, known based on not the lost books, but the books that you currently have. He had 12 disciples from all different backgrounds. Cultural appropriation. Why? Because you can only connect with who you see. 
So if you cannot see yourself in that position, you would never want to be in that position. Therefore, you would never buy that product. So a lot of y'all got good products, but you don't know how to story tell. Y'all be so caught up in the hypocrisy of things. It's a scam. He using that platform to just so he can sell on this platform. Duh. Duh what? Jesus did that. The only people he knew was in Bethlehem. How the hell would he sell his product all over their little world if he didn't connect with people that had connections in different demographics and environments? Duh. You know the problem is? A lot of y'all are mad that other demographics understand it because you read the Bible as a religion, they read the Bible as a manual. Two total different games that we play in. So, before I continue class, press the number five if you're picking up what I'm putting down, King Ashley Ann style. Press number five if you're picking up what I'm putting down. That's why scripture, it tells you the wealth of the righteous is stored up in the hands of the wicked. Why would it tell you that? It's because the wicked is going to read the Bible for what it is actually saying. The righteous are going to read the Bible for what it wants it to do spiritually. So the wicked will always have what's ours because you don't know how to read your own manuals. So because you don't know, the ignorant do ignorant shit. What's ignorant doing ignorant shit? My heaven upstairs. It ain't down here, so I'm just going to chill until I get to heaven. Why do you think God going to bless your lazy ass with a mansion in gold in heaven if you couldn't create that here on earth? If there is a heaven, why would he give your lazy ass all that and your lazy ass was unproductive when you had a chance to be actively engaged? So you gonna bet your bottom dollar on an unknown future versus the future you already understand today. So they tell you that. How do they tell you that? In stories. Because your his story is a story being told by a him. <laughs> so you buy into the story that you believe. So if people don't believe that your coconut water is the best, they're not going to buy it. You got to get them to believe it. Y'all be like, man, the white man know what they doing. They done took our kids, put them in education schools, and they teaching them our day stuff, and they teaching us the wrong history so that we can stay enslaved for them forever. Duh! Is that a bad thing? No, it's not a bad thing. It's only a bad thing when you don't know how to do it for yourself. <clears throat> That's when it's a bad thing. So of course they're going to teach information their way. Why? Because they know that stories stick with you the most. Have you understood something? Watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this. Why do they want to start with our children? Why do they want to start? They want to start with our children because guess what? They are in the education business. Oh my God. Them, them bad, bad men. They just, just, just encapsulated the world. They're in the education business. Their product is for them to stay in control. Whoever they is. We don't even know who they is. We just be saying they. We just be saying they. We be on here, they, 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 and don't even know who the damn they is. Who is they? <laughs> who is they? Y'all over here, man, they got us down. Who is they? Define they.
They in the education business. Why? Because they know that if I can educate them to believe something, they'll buy any product I put in front of them. So if they believe that buying a house with a white picket fence is the American way, and I teach them that as a young pup, when they get older, mm, y'all get ready. We finna rack up. Why? Because they play the long game because they're in the, they're deeply involved in the education system. From children to middle school to high school to college to secondary to bachelors to then all of that information. And y'all still think they selling you something? No, you bought because you believe the story from the education that they gave you. That's just game I got from Jesus. You still don't want to read the Bible? Jesus understood that he can't go and sell. He got to re-educate. He got to go take the ones that rejected the education. Let me re-educate them. And then when I re-educate them, those people will see the result of the rejected. And they're going to want to come on board because they used to see them and talk shit about them. But now they thriving. So now they want to get on the boat because they don't want to miss it. That's how you change people. <clears throat> You know what that's called? It's called testimonials. Oh! Pale, pale, Ige. It's called testimonials. It's called testimonials. It's called testimonials. That's what it is. It's just testimonials. Y'all don't get it? So when they was pressing Jesus, he said, they say. He said, I am whatever they say. <laughs> what do they say about me, big dog? <laughs> what, what do they say? What do they say? I am whatever they say. Because he understood that it's the education business that sells the product. So y'all running y'all ads, cool. Y'all getting on these platforms and teaching, cool. But the education industry is a $200 billion industry. You want to know why? The education industry is in a $200 billion industry. You want to know why? I'll tell you why. Just simply because... They know that if I can groom you, I can sell you anything. Now, you can think of that as negative if you want to. I like to think of it as possible. It's about education. So Jesus educated himself. Educated himself on the terrain, the environment, the people. Then he went and started selling his product by educating. Did y'all know Frank Lucas did that in that movie? He let him taste, you know, the work. That was educating them on the work. Y'all know that that in the show Snowfall, when he got when he made that crack and he said, No, let everybody taste it. They gonna come back. That's educating them on the work. Y'all know why I go live and I get so much game? And I, listen, I'm probably one of the few that can get on live and teach every day, three different segments, two, three hours at a time, and never run out of information. You want me to tell you why? Because that's just a taste. If I can do this for free, what do you think I can do for paid? If I'm doing this jump roping in my sleep, what do you think I do when I'm fo fully focused on your business? I'm educating you on why I'm worth $10,000 an hour. Because if I can give you life-changing information in general over a two-hour series, what do you think I can do in an hour just specifically working on your business? It's the education. 
Why are so many people's businesses and business owners, why are you misunderstood when shit hit the fan? Because you never educated nobody. How do people have such cult-like following? They educated. They educated. Why? Because Jesus was about the long game. He was about the bigger picture. That's what he was about. But you, you, you short-sighted. And because you short-sighted, your product gonna sell today, but it ain't gonna stand the test of time. Why? Because you're the only one that know about your product. Jesus started a franchise before they was franchising. Boys say, here go the blueprint. Go multiply. <laughs> You'll be greater than I. <laughs> I learned that from scripture. I learned how to build a business from scripture. I learned operations from scripture. I learned how to sell products in, through education through scripture. I knew product proposition through scripture. I learned how to deal with devils through scripture. I learned how to hire a team through scripture. And the only time I took L's is when I got off the manual. This is all you need. Y'all, if y'all go look at all of the business information, if you really learn how to decipher this, you're going to realize a lot of information came from one book. Because can I tell you something? This was the first book. There, there was no book or collection of books created at that time. It was only scrolls. This was the first actual collection of books in one big book that was ever created. So every manual started here. Before then, it was word of mouth. Or it was scrolls that was hard to pass through. This was the first book that actually entered in the ecosystem of a book. So of course, all things start and stop with the manual. Of course, things get better, things evolve, but you cannot take away from the manual. The actual startup of it. I tell you, listen, listen, I may, I listen, I may start a Bible study course or program, I think I'm a teacher for free though, but I'm just letting y'all know, I cuss, I, I'm me teaching the Bible, okay? You ain't finna make me feel bad for using the words that I use. That's why I stopped teaching behind the pool pit. I, want, I felt the urge to cuss too much. So y'all finna get this information, how it hits my shana now. <clears throat> so, the education business model. So when I looked at it, I said, wait a minute. Somebody said, I'm Muslim, brother, respect. Me too. I'm Christ-like. Me too. I'm Buddhist. Me too. I'm Hindu. Me too. <laughs> I cuss. Me too. <laughs> I drink a little bit. Me too. I'm a part of the Me Too crew. You want me to tell you why? I ain't gonna go down that road. That's gonna be enough for now. Y'all be getting me off chat. So, scripturally, right? Education business. So my business changed when I said, yo, I'm going to teach. Not just do a sales pitch. I'm going to teach. You know what I did? I taught for free for so many years. I still freaking teach for free now. Some of y'all been on this live an hour and 33 minutes it's ridiculous but after I teach you and I educate you can anybody admit that the trust every time I teach continues to grow between you and I can anybody admit that the trust between you and I actually continues to grow the more that I teach 
I had somebody. I forgot who it was. They was like, bro, I didn't know. But I don't know. I didn't know about you. I thought you were skeptical. And then after hearing you teach, I changed my mind. I forgot who it was in the cartel. Every time I teach, every time I teach, every time I teach, y'all be like, shit, I man, just, man, Jake different. Every time I teach, y'all may be like, man, I don't know about Jake, but every time I teach, y'all say, you know what? <laughs> you know, Jake authentically him. So, God damn it, if, <laughs> if God is blessing him with these downloads, he got to be doing something right. <laughs> Listen, I'm a bad brother. I can sing. I can dance. I got rhythm. I can teach. I can run a business. I'm a beautiful man. Boy, God has blessed me. Okay. So now look. So so let's look at something, okay? Let's let's really look at the context of what we're saying. Why can you still hoop? Yeah, I can hoop. Ain't nothing I can't do. I golf, I hoop, I read, <laughs> all right? Shit. Uh, that may be the definition of a renaissance man. I got spending, I got bad spending habits though, even though I'm 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 in budgeting and finance. God's still working on me. A lot of my books came from me trying to teach myself. <laughs> So I was trying to convince me to do better. And it worked. I did. That's a whole nother conversation. All right. So um, I know I read, I write. Yeah, that's basic literature. Y'all be getting me off topic. So this education business. The reason why your business is not good is because you don't teach. The reason why people don't trust you is because you don't teach. One of the best lessons I learned as a pastor, yeah, I used to be a preacher. I still technically am a preacher. I'm just uh, a renegade. Fuck the system. And most of y'all pastors actually cuss a lot too, by the way. They just don't be cussing in front of y'all because they they need y'all tithes and offering. But I heard what they be saying in the background. I'm just like, yo, just say I'm I'm sure you can win more people if you just just say what you got to say. Move move the pulpit and just pull up a chair and a table. You can say whatever you want to say. But just make sure it's tasteful. You can't be up there in MF. -er. They're walking around here. You, boy, if you don't get your, I just saw you smoking a black before Sunday. You just smoked. I, I literally saw, I saw you. I saw, I saw you, bruh. <laughs> so we're going to, we're going to act like I didn't see you seeing me, seeing you, seeing us. So we didn't see each other. All right. I got you. So, when we talk about this education business, when we talk about it, what I need us to understand is this. When it comes to your product, Jesus showed us it's about education. So, y'all see this rising increase of education. Like a bunch of people making money. Uh, really selling shitty courses, but I mean they making money, they educating, they doing what they gotta do, right? No, no, no practice. Some of them got rhyme and reason, some don't. That ain't the point I'm making. The point I'm making is education is two hundred billion dollar industry that ciphers into every other thing in your world. Educated. The more educated your customer is about your product or brand, the more that it works. That's why when you create a podcast like in Digital Real Estate Empire with Brother Ben X, he teaches, start a podcast. Get on social media. Be your authentic self. Why? Because you're going to educate people on your brand, educate your, your the people on who is behind the brand, and educate the people on the product and why they need your product. This is all education. 
I'll take questions uh, uh, at the end, Cartel Cousins, okay? It's all education. So, uh, for you to actually want to get money from people, selling a product and not educating them on the product and how it can benefit them is actually uh, not the right way that the scripture talks about. Scripture says, the greatest among us who shall be a servant of all. A lot of them be like, bro, servant. No, servant just means to serve. I know that we're dealing with people who have access to information but don't read. Uh-oh. So y'all be like, I'm just going to Google it. You never Google it. And even when you Google it, you lack understanding because some of the words that they use, you don't even have a real definition for it. That's why cartel cousins, we always look up the what? The definition for words. Because when you get understanding, you get some standing to you. See, you can't stand your ground if you lack understanding. Can't stand your ground if you lack understanding. So, when it comes to serving someone, you got to understand that there is an education process to it. This is where I failed as a leader in my company and also in products that went out uh, to the people. When we went against the blueprint, we took a lot of L's. Never drop a product that you don't educate people on. If you're not willing to write the information on your page, you're not willing to make videos about it, you're not willing to teach on it, then you should not be selling it. Period and point blank. It should be free. Matter of fact, have y'all noticed? Every true billion dollar company technically literally lets you try their products for free at some point in time. Think about all the tech companies. Google. Some of y'all still got free Google sites. To this day, you got a Gmail. And you didn't actually buy a G Suite or buy anything else until you finally got acquainted and you got accustomed to it then you end up buying some products from Google. Facebook, free. Instagram, free. Why? Because they're educating you on their platform so they can sell you the ads. Educating you on how to use the platform so you can buy ads when you start a business or whatever you want to do. Everybody in the world that has touched millions of dollars or billions of dollars understand this concept. That's why I'm a firm believer that every company should have a consulting education department. Every company should have a consulting education department. I'm a firm believer of that. Every company should have a consulting education department. Somebody said my biz code builder was free for the first month. Absolutely. Every company should have a consulting and education department. Why? Yes. Somebody said something about the biz code building, oh, and I was just trying to see what's going on. <laughs> oh, you said my company, you ain't. <laughs> Why? Let me tell you the number one reason why people have customer issues. Do y'all want to know the number one reason why people have customer issues? The number one reason why people have customer issues is because they were never educated on the product to get in. So if you start a tech and software company and don't offer or teach or even sell training on how they can use your software to get their given result. They're going to get on, but they won't stay. A lot of people um, may or may not know that on this internet of things, I'm like 
I'm not the Godfather because Nelson Nash is a Godfather, but I'm damn. I'm, but I'm 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 the granddaddy of teaching banking to our culture. Private banking using insurance reserves. I got two curriculums. I wrote two curriculums. These are hard covers. I only got a hundred of these. Um, I taught people, and I am teaching people how to be the bank. So, why did I start teaching people that? Here's, here's the answer. Because I was tired of dealing with customers that finally got a policy so they can start building uh, their bank and then calling the office every week with questions that I should have had answered originally. Somebody said, what's these two? This is the private banking challenge and the private banking blueprint. Y'all already have this inside of your um, inside of your pack, but these are the original hardcover copies of it. So if you don't have a pack, um, you can go get the pack, but these are the hard original covers of these. I only have 100 of them. I only order 100 every quarter, so only 100 people get them every quarter, the hardcover copy of these. That's not the point that I'm making right now. Um, point I'm making is this I realized I was doing business backwards after they bought the product they were more confused after they bought it because they bought it based off hype okay I want y'all to be honest with me real quick okay I don't know if y'all will be or not press the number 5 if you bought a product just out of hype and you didn't want to miss out tell the truth if you've been got at some point in the time of your life it's okay Press the number one. I mean, press the number five if you've been got and you bought a product off a of hype just to buy it. Press number five. It's okay. It's okay. We all been there before. Then you bought it, and you're like, okay, what's next? <laughs> and. Yep, I got the iPhone off of hype. But I but I, listen. Somebody bought a wig off of hype and it was trash. I did buy the off of iPhone off of hype. But I stayed because somebody taught me how to use it. This is my point. This is my point. So the reason why I said, well, you know, I brought it off a of hype and you got in, you're like, damn, ah, ah, oh, I got you, I got your OSS, like, ah, oh, uh, can't believe I bought this shit, damn, mm, stuck in it, right? Well, here's the deal. You wouldn't deal with that with your consumers if they know what they're getting, you educated them before, so when they purchase, they're an educated buyer. So, so, just with one of my companies, just with one of our companies, just with one of our companies, we literally, we went from selling $5,000 annual policies on average to $15,000 policies on average, seeing less people making more money all because of the education period. Now, it's up to you if you want to make your education, your consulting education department or company to your, your product free or not. I don't necessarily agree that everything should be free. However, if you don't have any brand appeal, you got you got to get out here and you got to put your, put your weight. Because if you're not willing to educate people and push your product and talk about it, why would people want to buy in? Why? Why would they want to buy in if you're not willing to educate people on it and talk about it? Why? Think about it. You say, Jake, um, why do you get on you talk about business a lot? One, because I have business software. And the more you learn about business, the easier it is for you to get on my software 
and purchase our software and guess what and do what actually win on the software and stay on the software if i don't give you business game you're going to get on my software at some point in time in your life and get on just to get off because you don't know that you don't know how to use it and you don't know how to make it work for you that's the same thing that people do with your products just some quick game if you had a hair business let's say you got a hair growth product and you begin to teach around the the, the concept of loss of hair and how to use the product and when the best use it the best practices the, the, all of this and this the best time to use it um why they actively need to use it and give them hairstyles that they can use that they can work with things that they can do the 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 the, the amount of time that that customer will stay being your customer will be a lot longer of a cycle than if you just sold them the product, made your money, and dipped. Well, Jake, I'm a barber. Listen, y'all finna see why I'm worth $10,000 an hour. Jake, I'm a barber. How can I perform consulting education if I don't have like a barber school or something? Well, we have an epidemic of single mothers. Single mothers don't even know how to brush their son's hair. They're learning on the fly. They don't know how to keep their son's hair up. They don't know, understand the importance of grooming, teaching a child grooming. You can literally create a, P, a PDF. You can create a, a, a course or a community that supports mothers and teaches them how to teach their son's grooming. Consultant education company right there. Then you get now. Now you got now you got that whole now you got that whole thing. You got to teach them how to pump. Okay, you do your son here like this, but then when you teach them, this is how you teach them. And then from there, you have a you have a consultant education piece where now you're teaching them. Okay, boom. Uh, you may teach a manhood stuff. You may teach that 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 woman how to teach certain information to their son because you don't know if she has a father. You don't know if they're in communication with with the child's father. Women would buy into that for benefit of their son, their men child. A consultant education company. What does that have to do? You have to see yourself more than just a barber. You're a groomsman. Your job is to groom what that man looks like, to take care of how he looks, his image. You see what that forces you to do? It forces you to think more of yourself than just the barber. Tie that back into him, Jake. Show him how you make it all make sense. That's why Jesus told the fishermen, I'm going to make you a fisher of men, not just a fisherman of fish. Because I'm going to teach you how to impact more using the skill set that you already have. I'm just trying to uh, 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 show y'all how to play work. Y'all see how I tied that in? A message from a little while ago, early in the message, I tied it all together and put a bow on top. The brother cold. Never seen nothing like it. I'm faster than the speed of light. I'm so bad thunder, I make thunder my lightning bolt. Do y'all see that? You may say, Jake, I gotta, I, I gotta, uh, uh, I gotta, I gotta, shoot, I gotta, um, Somebody give me a product. Somebody give me a product. Come on, I'm going to do three products right now on the flizz eye. I'm going to do three products right now on the fly. All right, T-shirts. Let's start with T-shirts. T-shirts. A lot of y'all, oh, oh, I want to do plumbing too, Richard. I want to do plumbing because some I had a black plumber come into my house and he don't even know who house he came into. And if he wasn't rushing out, I was gonna bless him on a business plan. But he left out too soon. So I'm gonna do that plumbing because I really want I really want to get some off my chest. All right, so look, t-shirts. Y'all are not in the y'all are not in a t-shirt business. You're definitely in the consultant education company business. Why? Here's why. Can I tell you why? Here's why. Why would somebody want to put on your shirt? Why? Nike is in the education business. Just do it. When you wear Nike, it's not just a fashion statement. It's you making the this. It's you making the a, a mindset that it is correct, Shayla, an expression that I am agreement with the message that's been educated amongst us a long time. 
That's why I like Nike. You're educated on the quality or the comfort or that you feel like. And eventually you get so caught up in the minutia of things or the routine of things that you just end up just buying it because you just like how it feels and you're educated on the product and it makes sense. So when you're in a t-shirt business, people should be buying your t-shirt out of representation of what it means. So for an example, watch this real quick. Uh, Iggy. Pale. Watch this. Watch this, y'all. He not even listening. Watch this. All right. Y'all see this hat right here? Show him the hat. Y'all see the hat? Y'all see the hat? All right, break down. How are people going to get that hat? Break it down in two minutes. Um, basically, I'm going to uh, help people understand exactly what the hat is, why they need the hat, what the hat uh, represents. And then uh, once they purchase that hat, it's going to give them information on how to further themselves, understanding what wealthy is, how to implement wealth into their life, how to implement health into their life, giving them a, a complete understanding of how to progress and move forward, uh, and, and really just giving them an understanding of what benefit this is going to provide for their life outside of just wearing it and looking dope and looking cool. So the hat is just a reflection or a reminder of the message that you really want them to have. Correct. That's religion. <laughs> So y'all got caught up. Religion is, you got so caught up in wearing a hat that you forgot the message. Religion is just, it was supposed to be just a reminder, a reflection. Y'all, I got five minutes left. Cartel Cousins, when it cut off, I'm not done teaching. We running that thing up today. So I don't know if y'all got time, but I got nothing but time today, okay? So look, that's what religion ended up being. Y'all got so caught up in the hat and the clothes you're supposed to wear and the structure of how you're supposed to be and you forgot the message. He just said how he's going to sell his hat is by selling information that's going to tell people why they need to be wealthy, why they need to be healthy, how to make it together as wealth and health, wealthy, how to build relationships. He's going to build a community of people that identify with being wealthy and that hat is going to be a highlighter to remind them on the decision that they made to be wealthy. Y'all see that? So he took a product that you would just sell for $30 and turned it into a mission statement that can change somebody's life. See, you got to start finding ways to educate people on why they should purchase from you. Now, what's going to happen? He's going to build a community with that hat. Now, anything in that community that he drops, they're going to buy it because they're in agreement with the message. That's called education. Boy, I'm bad to the bone, boy. Let me see what else we got. Let me see what other examples I got up in here. Because I'm so bad. I'm so bad. I'm so bad. Oh, listen. This is what we're going to do. We're going to make a pause real quick. Because I got to use the restroom. That's why I keep spinning. Uh, cousin Cartel Cousins. I'm leaving. And I'm coming right back. Because my two hours is up. So if y'all can't stay, you good to leave. Just do this like you do in church. Leave early. But I'm not done because I got some more, I got some more, uh, I got some more breakdowns of, of, of ideas that I want to tell you why it's a, it's a consultant education company. All right. We're blessed in the city. Hold on, y'all. I'm going back live again. Oh, I may not be able to go back live in the cartel. Oh, I got to wait for that to end. All right. Hold on one second, y'all. Cousins on YouTube. Cousins on YouTube. Hold on one second. Cousins on YouTube. Going to take a little intermission.
I'm back. It's a real class, right? They're like, damn, this is a real show. Brother man had to go for real. I had to go. Okay, if y'all still picking up what I'm putting down, press number two. If y'all still got time for some lessons, press number two. I'm going to be off here shortly. I'm going to be off. But I just got some teaching in me. I got to finish my point. People done popped out, that's cool. Somebody said, please save the live. Not saving the live. Y'all gotta get in where you fit in. Not saving the live. You gotta get in where you fit in. We back. <clears throat> Our, uh, Cartel Cousins, put in the chat. Put in the chat. Put in the chat. Uh, uh, a couple of more. A couple of more. Uh, how do you say? A couple of more examples. Products of businesses. Products of businesses. I'm sorry, unfortunately, for those that are on IG, I'm not taking requests from you all. Oh, I got 38 minutes on IG. So here's the deal. So here's the deal. I only got, dang, IG gone. Uh, caregiver planners. I have no idea what that is, cousin. Oh, let me look on. Oh, I, th I forgot I had YouTube up here popping and going. YouTube and getting some value over here. YouTube, y'all getting some value? YouTube, y'all getting some value? Sell inspirational cups with uplifting messages. Interior design. Um, I think I want to do that one. So, if I had an interior designing business, is it is it for event interior design? Or is it for, or is it for um, like homes? First question. Is it for events or homes? Residential properties, commercial, events, okay. Well, I'll just do residential because those are three different focal points. So you can't you can't educate them the same. Okay? You can't educate them the same. It's very important. Um so residential properties. Um, I would imagine that you do I gotta get some understanding. I gotta imagine, Allison, that you do uh, um, interior design for married couples. Is that true? All right. Um. That's very easy because 
education is about grooming your customer whether you consider grooming ethical or not jesus did it so it's about grooming someone to value you. okay let's just start with residential corporate businesses for residential let's just start residential for people um uh, there are newlyweds getting married every day and there are ladies that are getting married that were solo by themselves with their mama daddy whatever that's growing up and they got to create a home or an ambiance that makes sense for their house right i know i've been into some houses where people the, the women thought that they were you know interior designers and it looked the mess i don't know why black folk black folk like the red and black thing it just i just never got it just everything red and black red and black you can actually start by creating pdfs that talk and teach people why about the importance of interior design um you can teach them about the importance of creating a safe haven for their husband their spouse their significant other um most women don't realize that when they create their home they don't create their home with their husbands in mind what i mean by that is this you don't create with the husband in mind that's why the husband don't want to be at home you made that whole entire house your safe haven your safe haven the couches got your stuff your colors um the blankets are all furry and soft you go into your room, it looked like just a woman stay there unless you go to the closet or the bathroom. So when you talk about just creating a place, a safe, inviting place for their, their family, your children, your husband, your significant other, your spouse, there's plenty of teaching points right there that can either get them to consult with you, fly you out there to do the work, or and or buy your PDFs or to subscribe to your newsletter of you giving game regularly on how to ensure that this household can be whatever whatever you can you can incorporate cleaning and ideas for arrangements fall is coming so here's some ideas of flowers some things you know with the air plants that are eat up some of the air along with this ambiance getting them to commit to like being okay with changing and moving stuff around that's a great way to be a consultant in interior designing Another way is uh, to start a consultant education company and target Airbnb hosts because they houses and apartments be trash. Especially the black owner. one. <clears throat> Especially the black owned Airbnb. You know it. They like, bro, we're going to put this in here. We're just going to do whatever they got that got that. We're going to bop, 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 bop. Yeah, we can tell that you got the got them ba 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 too. So teaching, uh, you can create an interior design business that focus because you do corporate businesses already, Allison. You can target Airbnb people or people that got rental properties, their short term rentals, and you can teach them how to make their place inviting, where people actually want to come and stay. And the reason why changing colors around and changing, um. Uh, 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 the way things look around because it'll actually anchor somebody to want to always come to that Airbnb because they feel like they're coming to a new place every time they come. Cool, quick idea. No execution with it because we ain't sitting talking one-on-one or this ain't like a group, uh, a small group session where we all can kind of collectively build. But that's, that's very simple and easy. As y'all can see, that comes easy. Somebody said, how do I apply? Erica said, how do I apply your product education concepts as a service provider? I create systems. What, what system do you create? There's a lot of systems. Food systems, relational systems, technology systems. Like, what system are you talking about? And by the way, there's a lot of people online that put that in their bio on Instagram and Facebook and stuff. I create systems. Like, what does that mean? I'm not talking about you in particular, but I'm just saying like, that's what people would be like. Because if somebody that actually has the money that wants your product, we don't know what that is. Dr. Ness, appreciate that. 
WordPress onboarding. Okay, I still don't know what that is. And the fact that you're still using WordPress, you should be on bizcobuilder.io. Okay, Cousin Jake ain't teach y'all free. Y'all need to all switch to my web builder. It's an operation system for online businesses from the web builder to the automation. Get it together. I got you, James. You know I'm going to make sure that you're good. Um, so WordPress onboarding. Um, now I got to ask you a question. The client experience. Okay. Um, lead gen. There we go, Erica. We're getting somewhere. Lead gen. So you onboard them and teach them. Uh, you build a system from lead gen to customer experience to selling, right? Is that what you do as a service? Is that, am I getting that right? Okay, good. All right, y'all. This is the three-phase consulting process. Y'all ready? Boy, I'm giving y'all. Do I want to give y'all that? Do I want to give y'all that? Do I want to give them this? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm going to give it to them. Dang. Let the Lord lead you. Well, I don't hear him right now because my ears are closed. IG been done. You said they got the pay to play. Okay, okay. Let, let me let me let me do a huddle. Let me do a huddle with the Lord. Hold on. I got him on speed dial. Hold on, hold on, I'm gonna talk to him. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't answer. He didn't answer for y'all, you know. Um, he sent me the voicemail. So, um, uh, you know, what would Grace do? He would sell it to y'all. <laughs> so, y'all may not want me to answer that one. You talking about Lord Grace? Lord Grace is selling. <laughs> Without question. That's my brother. That Hey, listen. He gonna sell. You see, that's the thing with DJ. He do he do the perfect amount of educating with selling. Like you know what I mean? I just be educating like a mug. All right, that's why we work good together. All right. So, no, they got They got to be some exchange we can make for this information. Man. What type of exchange y'all think is fair? I'm open. What type of exchange do y'all think is fair? No, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that. I'm good. I'm just, I'm just fucking with y'all. <laughs> I'm just fucking with y'all. <laughs> I'm going to give it to y'all. <laughs> All right. All right. So. While y'all negotiating, Cousin Jake, I want to let you know Dr. Ness purchased her domains for BMC Consulting and started the FB group. That's what I'm talking about. Why are you talking about yourself in third person? You must be feeling like a bad one man. All right. If somebody start talking about themselves in third person, you know, they feeling themselves. I'm feeling myself. <laughs> All right. So, look. Um, there are three phases. To your consultant education program. 
three phases. Y'all ready? The first phase is do it yourself. Write that down. The first phase is do it yourself. Somebody can write it in the chat too to help those that want to take their time. The first is do it yourself. Okay. The second is done with you. And the third phase is done for you. DIY, DWY, and DFY. Do it yourself, done with you, or done for you. Thanks, Cousin Deanna. So, what does that mean? So, what does that mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Phase three is done for you. So when you're building your consultant education company, even if you have a service or a product, okay, it works just like this. So say, let me choose a product to show y'all. Um, oh, let's uh, let's stick with, uh, let's stick with Erica, because I was answering Erica's question. I, was, I almost moved on, Erica, and Erica, and like, bro, he started with me. Like, how did he... How did he <laughs> forget about me? So the do-it-yourself is where you literally give them the step-by-step -step putting in a program and a curriculum, and you sell it to them. Here go the information. Here go the manual. Go figure it out. You can do that in curriculum form. Or you can do that in course form. Or you can do both. Curriculum and course. Because some people like to read. And some people like to see. That's do it yourself. That means I'm going to teach you how to do it. And you go do it for yourself. And that will always be your cheapest price. That will always be your cheapest price. Because once you record it, once you write it in a book or a PDF or a curriculum, you'll never have to do it again. So be like, man, I can't afford your services. Okay, you can afford this. This is my exact blueprint. Go get it done. Step by step. So the four layer, so the four layer, the four layer model. Are you going with them to the house? So the four layer model, you're gonna show them what to do. You're gonna show them what to do and how to do it in the first phase of do it yourself. So you got the what to do and how to do, but they missing the understanding. Y'all see that Erica? So that's why I don't mind giving my information out. People gonna steal it anyway. But what they don't get is my the understanding. So like, so like I can give y'all business advice all day and some of you may take the business advice from the courses and from these free little trainings or $9.99 a month and y'all may say this is all I need to get to my next level but if you don't understand the why I do certain things you will never get to my level and beyond that takes more phasing does that make sense so that's why I don't mind giving game I'm a wealth of knowledge why because I can give you the what to do and the how to do. You can get that on YouTube. I can get you the what and the how, but it's the why and then the mastery that you need guidance on. Y'all got that? So, 
Erica, your entire process, it should be blueprinted out anyway. It, all of y'all's blueprints need to be on paper somewhere. Scripture says, write it down and make it plain. So your blueprint should already be written down somewhere. Okay, good. Sell it. Step by step what to do. Sell it. That'll get a newer entrepreneur that you don't really want to waste a lot of time with, honestly. No, you know, if you've been a consultant for a while, like dealing with, you know, new entrepreneurial issues is sometimes draining because they ask the same questions over and over again. That's correct. Erica. So, it's like this scripture. Y'all saw how I broke down the scripture today? They can get the manual, but if they don't know how to read it, they can hook it up, but it ain't going to be hooked up efficiently, like running and understanding why it runs. So, that's the cost of going a cheap route. You still get me, just in manual form. The second phase is done with you. So I may charge $400 to $2,000 for a course curriculum or a program. It's automated. I created it one time. I'm not recreating it because it's amazing how it is. I create timeless information. I don't really use a lot of things that's going on in that moment. So you will be able to continue to get the information that you need. Much like the original private banking blueprint for those of you guys that actually took the private banking blueprint original. Y'all see, I, it was me on a webcam teaching and giving game. All I had was a webcam. That course, that product went to 22 countries. Just the way it was. So you sell that. Typically, nine times out of ten, after you sell that, some of them are going to be like, man, it's a lot of I got to do. I might as well just go ahead because why? You educated them. You let them know what the process was going to be. You even showed them how to execute it. But now they'll, they'll probably pay for your done with you, which is, you know, you just kind of looking over. They're doing it, but you just kind of looking over their shoulder. You just kind of like looking over their shoulder, like, oh no, do this, do that. Okay, boom, connect that. Now let me see when it's done. That's kind of like that process. So that may range anywhere from a thousand to ten thousand dollars, depending on you know where you are. And then the done for you, it says, I'm going to build it out for you, then I'm going to train you on how to use it and why I did the things that I did. That's a higher ticket. And when, Erica, what do you charge for full system build outs? I charge $100,000. Me and my team charge 100000 yeah, call on them. I'm Christ-like. Call on them. You want to know why? Because people are not paying for me to build their system. They're paying for the result of the system, which comes with a cost. I would charge $3,500 for a done, for, done with you. Like, I'm looking over it. And I'm consulting you all the way through. But see, people didn't buy into the product that Jesus was selling just because they bought into it because of the result that he promised that it would bring. See, when you sell, when you educate on the result, people will pay for the result. So if I'm telling you, this exact system is worth this. So the same education, uh, the same education program that y'all was able to get like for ninety nine dollars, which was absolutely ridiculously crazy, I was selling for five thousand dollars a pop, and people were paying for it because why? Because of the results of the program. People are not paying for your education; they're paying for the result of your education. 
So what is $5,000 when you know the information you just learned from our product is literally the same blueprint I use to build million dollar businesses. And if anybody has been to my company education, uh, a consulting education company program, or y'all in the middle of it right now, you know that that program is second to none and y'all stole money from me at $99. You know that for a fact. That's big facts. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It ain't $99 no more, but it still ain't close to the 5000 it was just for this group. But out there in them streets, yeah, we popping them. Now, what's the point that I'm saying? I believe in my product so much. I educate for free so much. I give so much game and value surrounding the topic so much. I just talked to y'all this about this whole, the education business model made us millions. I gave you full trainings, execution points, and examples, and none of that information is in my program. That's how cold the program is. <laughs> Do you see that, Erica? You see how I did that? But if you're not confident on the result of what you're doing, you're going to undersell yourself, therefore people are going to undercommit. So if you want Jake for thirty five hundred dollars, that's a program. That ain't my time. And honestly, if it wasn't for DG, this this community would be at like two hundred, three hundred dollars a month, just because of the information that I give. Because I know it's it's going and it is getting y'all results. DG, whether he said or not, he for the people, y'all. He for the people. So y'all thank DG. Y'all thank him. Thank him. Hallelujah. So, DG not here, y'all, so y'all ain't got to thank him now. Y'all go thank him in his DG, in his DM or something. So, Erica, do you see the difference? My team probably do the same thing that you do. I hate that you're doing it on WordPress, but, you know, we'll, we'll get you to transition to biz code a little later. Any of y'all still getting my free game and information? You're not on bizcobuilder.io. Y'all some thieves. You better take your butt to my platform. Bizcobuilder.io. We got automation, email automation, web building, CSS. We got all types of stuff. I, you know, we got all that. Bookkeeping. You can schedule books, book service, booking services on there. You can put your products on there. Hook up any merchant account, sales of all that stuff. Second to none. <laughs> Y'all yeah, can give you a product example, Royal. Alright, so so alright, so the third phase is done for you, remember? The done for you is I'm doing all the work. So not only am I gonna do it for you, I'm going to train you on it. I'm going to onboard you and tell you why for thirty five hundred dollars. You got to be kidding me. No ma'am, no sir, no ham, no turkey. Yes, you can add custom code on there as well, David. Yep, it does email automation. That's right, Erica. And we got templates for emails. We got templates for uh, phones. We got templates for websites. We got the whole nine. You said you don't have a consultant trainer loaded in, my, in your library yet? It was automatic. That program, I think, was one of the first programs that already had everything in there. <clears throat> oh, and if you sent the email, it ain't going to get answered, Tiffany. You got to submit a ticket. BizCoSupport.com. And that's also in the back end, uh, in the cartel. When you click that button, you're supposed to go to the, uh, a ticket. All right. Um, Erica, you understand that? The three phases done do it yourself done with you or do it for you done with you is typically in a group setting so when y'all see that group those group coaching that's usually what that is that person really you can't really afford that person like one-on-one -on -one, so you lower the price to allow a group to take over that whole service so if i were to do group coaching like direct business group coaching it would be, um, it'll be a thousand dollars a month if I were to do like group coaching 
for a uh, six month period. The goal is to not have you with me forever, to be with you six months. It'll be $1,000 a month. So that's, that's that done with you. Like, tell me what you did, what you fixed right, and you go do it, and then come back to the group and make sure that it's done. And hit the checkpoints. That's what I would charge. So it'll probably be like $2,000 or what I would charge now. But if I were to start at y'all level, It'll be like $1,000 for the program, $500 to $1,000 for the program. Do it do, uh, done, uh, do it yourself. And then done with you would have been, I probably would have charged anywhere from $50 to $200 a month for the group coaching for a certain period of time. And then after that, the goal is to get them to want to do one-on-ones and some other stuff after that. That's usually how the value ladder goes when it comes to that service. Okay, Did y'all pick up what I was putting down for the service? Somebody give me a product. A lot of products don't make it long term because you haven't built a cult following community. You can't spell culture without cult. So, Deanna, I would charge $500 to $1,000 for my program. If it's do it yourself, I would charge anywhere from $50 bucks to about $500 a month for my live group coaching for a period of time. If I was starting at y'all's space and level. Um, and then, you know, like that. And then, you know, the highest level is done for you. So cold pressed juice, James. So if I had cold pressed juice, first of all, I will be only talking online about cold pressed juice. Like the benefits of everything that's around nutrition, health, um, uh, uh, why cold press juice is important I got my cold press juice in there I think I already drank it Maybe I already drank it uh, Why it's important Because honestly to tell you the truth I heard about cold press juice for a long time But it wasn't until somebody educated me on it That made me actually want to go buy it And here's the thing The person that educated me on it They didn't have the product They were just educating And that's just what they do Imagine they knew all that stuff about educating about cold press juice. What if they had a PDF, a brochure in the actual product? Like I can sell you my cold press juice if you want it. I would have literally been buying from them, y'all. I spent about $175 every three days re-upping with cold press juice. Somebody do the math. $175 times two times two times a week. What's 175 times two? 350, right? 175 times two is 350, right? I knew Marvin was gonna get it. Marvin don't play with the numbers. What's 350 times four? What's $350 times four? That's $1,400 a month that Whole Foods get just from me. All from me being educated. Multiply that times 10 people. That's $14,000 a month. That ain't thousands of people. That's 10 people. That's 10 people. $14,000 a month. Man, James, I don't know. I don't know if you can make it like Whole Foods, baby. You're going to have to got that going. I'm hooked. I'm hooked. You're going to you gonna have to educate me off. So you better go do your research because you ain't getting my service for free. I don't care if you were a good client of mine before. You got to earn it. $16,800 per year from one person just because of cold press. Let me tell you something. I actually use it as a meal replacement. Here's why. I naturally do not eat lunch on most occasions. Chad came in here, bought me a lunch early, and I still haven't ate it, and it's freaking 5 o'clock. So, so I don't lack any nutrition. I take my nutrients my nutrients in juice form. Some of y'all don't know, I really don't like chewing. I don't like eating. I really don't like chewing. 
Like, I'd, I'd, I'd be like, dang, like, wait first. Lord, I like my teeth. I'm just saying I don't like chewing. The activity of chewing is tiresome to me. But I can drink my nutrition all day, especially if it's good. Go check, you know I got you. So, so with that being said, right? With that being said, guess what? Guess what? One person took the time to educate me. And Whole Foods is a benefactor of the education. Imagine that. You got all the information to educate somebody on something, and you don't even have a product in that specialty. So that's what I would do if I was cold pressed. I would, I would literally, I would literally start a nutrition consulting education company, where your number one job is to to consult and educate people on nutrition in general. See, a lot of people do. This is what we do, right? You take, you take, the cold press. You like, damn, what can I teach on cold press? No, teach about nutrition in general. What vegetables are good for the heart? What vegetables are good for the liver? What drink is, what fruit is good for such and such? When you begin to break that stuff down, that will begin to get them to understand the importance of it and the combination of them all. What does that do for them? How much does that extend their life? Does it help kind of revitalize their eyes? These are things that people would actually pay for a PDF. When do I, y'all, I didn't even know not to drink watermelon juice at night because it has, acid, uh, it has a little bit of form of acidic to it. Although it's, it's, it's the highest form of water, so for some reason you're only supposed to have it when you're doing your active times during the day, not when you sleep at night. So when somebody told me that, I'm just drinking the water, I'm just killing uh. And then somebody told me, no, you drink all your, you can drink as much watermelon juice as you can before 2 o'clock, after 2 o'clock, leave it alone and get on this, get on, uh, Get on coconut water or whatever it is. And here's why. I said, oh, damn. So I had the right intentions with my cold press, James. But because I wasn't educated, I may have gotten adverse results or whatever, whatever the results could have been. And guess what would have happened? I would have not liked the outcome and got off the product. But guess what? Whole Foods, they got me for sure. Cause now I know when I'm supposed to drink what, the greens and I know I I got my schedule down now. Um. So I spend a lot of my time only educating people on stuff I got a product for. Even your service is a product, okay? It's a product. You're putting together something or you're doing something that is a product. So I'm not going to educate on anything I don't have a product for. Because if I'm the main benefactor of that education, somebody else is now going to receive a thousand a month, five hundred dollars a month, whatever a month from me educating them. So I try to stay within my scope because my number one job is to educate people on their areas, things that they're missing, and then show them that I have the solutions for the stuff that they're missing. So I've been talking about the education business model. Y'all know that I have a entire program that is the consulting education company. It gives you over 40 some lessons or modules, 50 some hours, literally teaching you how to assemble your consulting education company from scratch. 
how to build your curriculum from scratch, how to launch it from scratch. So I'm not going to teach something I don't have a solution for. Y'all see that? All right, I'm going to do one more product. Then I'm going to get up out of here. I know I, I, how long I've been. Shoot, two hours and 39 minutes. This college professor work right here. I'm earning. I Listen, I'm doctor for real. Autism and sensory toys. That's very simple. <clears throat> Who has the most fear dealing with autism? Who has the most fear dealing with autism? Indigo. Mothers. Not just, not just mothers, but what stage of a mother? New. Pregnant, because now you know that that child has some type of chromosomal issues when they're in the womb. New moms. So my number one campaign will be directly at prepping the new mom for their autistic child. What would you do as a consultant? Provide PDFs, provide pamphlets, provide all these things, and then show them the solution of your product. See, if I can make you aware... If I can make you aware of the issue, right? If I can make you aware of the issue. Hold on. If I can make you aware of the issue, right? <clears throat> if I can make you aware of the issue, and once I make you aware of the issue, I then give you basic solutions that can begin to build your confidence without you having to purchase anything from me. You're immediately going to see some type of change with a little bit of game I gave, a little bit of advice I gave, a little PDF, a little video online, a little value that I gave. From there, you're going to trust whatever solution I offer. So if I'm talking to a new, think about it. Think about a 20, y'all. I just got used to being a father and my daughter finna be seven Wednesday. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, no, uh, Wednesday. I ain't gonna lie. I, I just got used to being a father. And, and uh, my daughter's about to be seven. So what do you think a mother is going through? Forget the father, the father, the breadwinner. If you're the father, the man, the man, he the breadwinner, he the this. That woman gonna hold the house down, make sure the children good. You may need the help here and there. But that main caregiver is that mother. So getting to the school, that don't matter. If you get to the mother, you'll get to the school. Because the mother gonna say, y'all ain't got a... Uh, Y'all ain't got indigo souls, uh, 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 autism sensory toys. What y'all doing? It's the it's the parents that get the schools to move to go buy certain things for the child. It's not the school, cause how can the school know what to get if they're not dealing with the same problem that autistic child is dealing with? Remember, y'all. You're doing deals with people. So you got to make sense. If I can get that mother to be hooked on my uh, uh, my sensory toys, and guess what? Autistic children going to be beating the hell up out of them toys, okay? It's beating the hell up out of them toys. I'm 
talking about it's whooping, it's whooping. They they'll they'll tear it up, they just destruct though. But if that mother saw it brought some peace, and she knows, watch this. Now Indigo, you build a community so that she can know that she's not the only mother dealing with that. See, the problem, the overwhelming portion is them feeling like they're alone. Imagine you, Indigo, going live regularly in your community just like this one. And giving value and giving game and giving uh, uh, comfort, bringing on experts, making sure your toys stay the best. Now, anything that you put out, guess what? It's amazing. But guess what most people do? You bring that autism toy out and you just go selling it. Yo, uh, yo we just need, you go make commercials of autistic children playing with the toys and saying, this is why they need it. Do you want some? <laughs> this is why they need it. Do you want some? <laughs> that ain't how you present it And that's not how you build a long term relationship Why? They'll buy the product But how, how often have we bought a product And because we didn't learn They didn't educate us And we didn't read the manual That we found out years later We was using the product wrong Y'all it wasn't until yesterday That I realized that a lot of the uh, the, the, uh, the, the silverware and stuff That we use in the kitchen We be using it wrong TikTok showed me That not, like 60% of the stuff That I was taught how to use Ain't the right way to use it So when they buy your product And they don't come back 9 times out of 10 It didn't work for them Because they did not know how to use it that's what I had to find out about our software company. People loved Bizco, but the problem was they did not know how to effectively use it. So they're not going to keep paying monthly for a subscription of a software that they don't know how to use. The people that stay on and don't ask no questions are the people that we trained and taught how to use it. Go figure. So I said, dang, okay, so if Indigo says, Ah, I got you. I got you. So if I teach them that they're not alone, I give them things that they can start working on prior to. I get them to get the toys and they start working on the toys and whatever. And then, then they got to watch this. Then they got to learn. Then they got to learn Indigo. Watch this. They got to learn how to get their child to engage with the toy. Because autistic children, my brother has autism and was blind since birth. So I know a lot about autism. Autistic children don't like new things uh, coming into their life. So once that toy enters that child's life and it's their safe zone, they're not going to not want to be without it. They're going to throw temper tantrums if they cannot find it. You got a customer for life. If you teach and train them right. Y'all see this process? That's why true entrepreneurship, truly building a brand, takes time. It takes effort. You can make bread today. It's amazing. But I don't want to have to keep reselling the same customer. You know what it is. Come back. You know what that work is. Come back. That's why we were like, shoot. We teaching people, all these people business, thousands of people business, and we teaching, we teaching them uh, uh, how to go to some other person's platform. No, we're going to build our own. And can't nobody teach business like those that actually did business. I don't know what them tech guys did. They just made a program and then sold it to everybody and then don't know how to teach people how to grow off of it. Y'all picking up what I'm putting down? I talked to y'all on another day about JV deals. I talked to y'all another day about 
learning how to do a joint venture like Jesus. See, Jesus knew how to Jesus knew how to close deals, big dog. Jesus was so good at getting I can help you get what you want. I need to get what I want and let's make this thing work. And then very seldom like you you you'll do JV deals with people for short short terms, but very seldom like you'll actually get somebody that you actually rock with. And you would you would prefer to do business with them long term. It's gonna take you. It's gonna take you some time, and I'll teach you how to do that. <clears throat> um, that's why I love. That's why I love working with DG, man. Love working with Brother Ben X. Those are JV deals that I, I could I could do business with for a very long time. Uh, suggestions on if we already have an ebook released. Uh, that's not specific enough. Can you give me some some more? This is gonna be the last one. Can you give me some more? I need some more. I have a nail tech manual release. Not selling a lot of them. Okay. Why do you think you're not selling a lot of them? What problem are you solving with this nail tech manual? Amari, uh, I don't I don't know too much about um cryptocurrency like banking with cryptocurrency so I wouldn't that's not my area of expertise I wouldn't be able to, to efficiently help you with that I can mosey around but that's not my specialty I can't help you with that one Hey Melissa, yeah, we um did you get did you get all your copies? We was waiting to for everyone to get their copies before we did the training. Did you get your did you get your uh your copy? All your copies? I have taught a person on how to start a nail business from scratch. Okay. Um Okay, you did? Okay. <clears throat> A nail tech. So they got to get licensed first. Right? They got to get licensed first. Right. Yeah, just because you just because you released it four years ago doesn't mean that sometimes it has a lot to do with branding. Like, see this this is something that I would I don't want to give you blanket advice for because I, I feel like I need to figure out what's the messaging that's being said. I would I would need to know like how long it takes for somebody to actually become a you know a licensed nail tech. Um the process, uh, rebranding the title. Maybe it's your title, it's not catchy, it's a focal point. Your ebook, maybe your ebook should be free. And then that 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 works them into consulting with you in group coaching or one on one coaching. So I don't really know exactly um, 
you know what 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 that what that flow is like, you know? I don't really know. So I would need more information. I'm sorry I couldn't be helpful right now. But I, I feel like I would need more information. I would definitely need more information. Okay. That's going to be the last one. I think we're coming on. Yeah, we're coming up to three hours teaching. Uh, are the materials for the reseller's trade still being finalized? I purchased the trade, but so far there's not any course material uploaded just yet. It was supposed to be. Ignacio! They said that they didn't get no information for the resellers program. There's nothing in there. They said that they didn't get information for your resellers program. Like, no, there's no video course put in there. Okay. I found this on the web for they said that they didn't get any information for Joe. Where? Check it out. In the back? Yeah. In the, in the, in the Kajabi. Okay. He said he'll check it out yeah. to make sure, but uh, that's that's yeah. already been recorded. Yeah. Yeah. He said he'll check it out to make sure. Um But that's already been recorded. And that's um I guess he thought it was already uploaded. So he's gonna check that to make sure. And I appreciate a lot of y'all's for y'all's patience uh with those programs, especially Melissa with the uh Capos. We were we were waiting, uh we were we were uh waiting for um the capos that became capos to ha all have their uh, books at the same time to try to make it fair. Um, yes, yeah, so well, let me see. I pr I, no problem, Dr. Ness. All right, so um, if y'all thought today's class was valuable, go to the cartel. Put it in a community. Put it in a post. What you learned from today. Um, the person who has the best authentic feedback. I will. Um, I got a gift for you. I'm not going to tell you what the gift is. But I got a gift for you. I'm tired. Three hours of teaching. Um, that should make up for the day I missed. Okay. So I want to hear no more about Cousin Jacob was missing you on what day. Because I ain't trying to hear it. Okay. Um, but other than that, we should be good. Y'all got a couple of examples that was there. I appreciate you too. Uh, for those of y'all that are on YouTube right now, if you want to join our community, go to familybankingcartel.com. www.familybankingcartel.com. Don't forget the www. Um, to join our community is for nine dollars and ninety nine cents. We do this on a regular basis. Me going in giving game, and if you want to know who I was talking to, I was talking to our cartel cousins right here in the chat. Um, those are ones that I participate with, answer their questions, so to make sure that they're good. Other than that, I think I may see y'all tomorrow. I've been in a real teaching spirit lately, so I may see y'all tomorrow. Um, but I know that uh, DG got class. DG and AC, my boy. AC, my man, uh, got class uh, tonight. Let me see. Who, let me see who participating. I'm seeing some familiar faces. I'm seeing some new ones too. Okay, okay, okay. There's a participation. There's some new ones too. Participation. There's some new ones too. Oh, AC, boy, AC, you was in here. Ain't say it. You ain't say it. hey. Cat, dog, hi. What's up, bro? Nothing. You're just going to be in here just snooping, nooping. Boy, I tell you, boy. You can't trust them. Can't trust them Negroes. Oh, and, um, yeah, he didn't even drop a one. He didn't drop a smile. God dang. So, uh. Um, what I will say is, yes, Indigo and Dr. Ness, y'all are doing exactly what I want y'all to do. Some of y'all got the same idea that you can be partnered with somebody that's within the community and start working on that idea collectively. Remember, if the vision is big enough, guess what? You can do it together. And remember... 
all partnerships don't have to last forever. They can last for a period of time, a short moment in time, a second. It can be for a year to just get y'all's brand both out there and you kind of dissipate. You can you can make the decision. But um, y'all should be building up and bridging together and offering, you know, your service and letting people know, you know, what's going on. Um, that's why coming to these lives like this are important so that people can kind of figure out, oh, such and such said cold pressed juices. I wonder what he want to do with that. You may be a nutritionist and you needed a product. And James Gochik got the product. Guess what that means? You can be the nutritionist that teaches in the program, in the community, and he can deliver the product. Boom, bada, boom, bam, bow. There you go. Example is just like that. So collab. Um, co collab and compete. I know y'all be y'all watching stuff online and say we don't compete, we collab. I compete. I'm trying to whoop everybody ass. Okay, so I'm collabing to compete at the highest level. I ain't collabing to say kumbaya. All right. Um, thank you for giving me the mask on the importance of educating followers, potential clients. Yeah, it really made it really made it more real for me and gave me guidance on how to. Yeah. A lot of y'all are trying to figure out how to create content and you, you're overlooking that most people don't know the how-to basics. Remember, all you got to do is speak for a minute or less to do a reel. You can literally say how to da-da-da, how to boom. And matter of fact, James, I would actually do a video teaching people how to do cold press juice. And I will give a PDF on how to properly uh, 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 cut they stuff and how to do they stuff. You may be like, Jake, but that's my product. Guess what? You taught them. And when they realize how much effort goes into, oh, when they realize how much effort goes into juicing, they're going to be like, shit, I'm just going to go to go to. Can you help me out? Because it's a lot. I tried to do it on my own. I got children. I got a husband or I got a wife. I got children. And shoot, I need you to help me. A lot of y'all be so scared. Don't give your ingredients, but you can show people the process. Last thing, have y'all ever went to a restaurant? Have y'all ever went to a restaurant where they showed you the kitchen? Like you can see the ingredients in the food. You can actually look in the kitchen and it's it's clear. You can kind of see their process. Why that? Why are they not scared to show you their process? Cause you ain't gonna mimic it. That's why you coming to them. You ain't trying to sit up in there and do all that. More people won't either. They're like, damn. So James, you can do a time lapse. It took me ten minutes to get this one jar. They gonna be like, ten minutes for one jar? Oh no, I just James, can I just pay you for it? Can I pay you for it? That's how you build, you know, confidence too. All right? So other than that, I love you. There is, see, Danielle Parker. I just ordered cold press DoorDash. You see what I'm talking about? That could that could have been you, James, on bizcobuilder.io. You could have already had your stuff set up, and they could have been cold press DoorDashing you. You put that thing in a little ice thing. You freeze that thing. You ship that thing across the, across the states. And bada bing, bada boom, there you go. <clears throat> you said, right, let me pay for your expertise. I don't know what you're talking about. But I am accepting personal one-on-one -on -one clients. If somebody, anybody want to be one, okay? I am accepting that. Anyway, other than that, I hope y'all enjoy the class that we got tonight. It's going to be jam-packed if y'all been missing them. Uh, I'm sure you're missing out on a lot of great information. ACB knowing his S-H-I-T. You already know DG the man. He told you in his name. His name is Lord Grace. So <laughs> make sure that y'all tune in. Y'all stay close to the fire. Y'all stay close to the information. And don't forget to implement. Implement, implement, implement. And if you do not already have the trade to starting your starting a consulting education company or department that goes with your products go to fbctradeschool.com 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 so you can get access to the program 
while it is still discounted immensely. Other than that, I love you. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. And this is one long ass class. I'm out of here.